19. I'm not sure what idiot divided up these chapters. And on top of that, I assigned this chapter to me. Stupid. <laughs> no, this is... Uh, uh, the Lord put this chapter here for a reason. That we we're going to discuss kind of land stuff today. So we are finally getting... This is the last chapter, the final chapter of the dividing of the land. Um, we'll have a couple nuggets. It will be a relatively short teaching. But um, let's pray. Uh, Father God, we, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Uh, Lord, we thank you, God, that um, we can trust that you did leave it here, every word for a reason. Uh, though sometimes we may, may not know what that reason was. Um, let's pray, God, that, that your word does not return void in our hearts tonight. Um, I thank you for it. I thank you, Lord, for these men that you chose to be here tonight. Um, Lord, we love you. You have been so good to us. Help us, Lord, to honor you with our lives, honor you with whatever gifts, uh, whatever situations you've given us. May we glorify you in them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So... This, this is kind of the chapter that the rest of the land is divvied up to those who weren't Manasseh. And, um, and they... I went to look for drawings of the, of the maps of Israel. And one thing I, I have noticed throughout Joshua is that modern day drawings of how the land divisions went are all varied. They're very, <laughs> you can get five different versions of that map of people's opinions on how this laid out and there'll, there'll be five different, you know, they're, they're, they're basically the same. You're basically going to have Judah down here and you're basically going to have Ishakar up there and you're, you know, they'll be roughly the same, but they're quite, they can be quite different as well. And so um, there's some, one of the things that definitely jumps out at me, though, is that there was um, vast differences in the size and even, even the quality of land that the Lord gave out to the different tribes. Now, let's, let's uh, read Joshua 19. I'm just going to read it straight through, admitting right up front that I don't know if this is the right way to pronounce many of these names. The second lot came out for Simeon, for the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families and their inheritance, was within the inheritance of the children of Judah. They had in their inheritance Beersheba, Sheba, Molada, Hazar, Shual, Baal, no, Bela, excuse me, Azim, Eltalad, Bethul, Hormah, Ziklag, Beth, Markaboth, Hazar, Susha, Beth Labaoth, La Labaoth, Sharuhin, thirteen cities and their villages, Ain, Ramon, Ether, Ashan, four cities and their villages, and all the villages that were around these cities, as far as Baal, ba Baaloth, Beer, Ramah of the south. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Simeon according to their families. The inheritance of the children of Simeon was included in the share of the children of Judah, for the share of the children of Judah was too much for them. Therefore the children of Simeon had their inheritance within the inheritance of that people. And you'll notice when you do look at maps, and I didn't bring maps, that Simeon is smack... Judah is about the bottom third of Israel. Simeon's a little chunk out of the middle of that, that bottom third. And it's interesting, Simeon historically essentially just becomes dissolved, for lack of a better term. Um, if you look at, and we see kind of the, the prophetic... Um, 
laying out of that plan in Genesis 49 when Israel, a.k.a. Jacob, is giving his blessings and, in this case, his cursing to Simeon and Levi. And it says in chapter 5 of Genesis 49, Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. Let not my soul enter their counsel. Let not my honor be united to their assembly. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they hamstrung an ox. Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. So they got a piece of land, but that land did not have uh, separation in the sense that, that all the others had this was my piece of land, which is different to yours. This is my piece of land, which is different to yours. It was completely surrounded by Judah. And because of that fact, it essentially, they became scattered within Israel. They became, they became separated within in Jacob. Levi, the Levites, obviously, we know, they, they didn't have a specific land. They had cities that they were given throughout, throughout the land. So we see there in Simeon that that, that, that was lost. Um, in that, not getting too political, but we could see that borders are important. <laughs> Simeon was lost because essentially he, he was within a, a whole other tribe. So let's go back to Joshua. I should have left my finger there. All right. The third lot came out for the children of Zebulon according to their families and the border of their inheritance was as far as Sarid. Their border went towards the west and to Mar Mara Mara Marala, there we go, went to Dabashith and extended along the brook that is east of Jachniam. Then from Sarid, it went eastward towards the sunrise from the border of Chisloth Tabor and went out toward Debaroth by passing Jephai, Jephiah. And from there it passed along to the east of Gath Hafir towards Eth Kazin and extended to Ramon, which borders Nia. Then the border went around it on the north side of Hanathan and it ended in the valley of Jephthahel. Included were Katha, Nahalel, Shimron, Edelah, and Bethlehem. Twelve cities and their villages. This was the inheritance of the children of Zebulon according to their families. These cities with their villages. The fourth lot came out to Issachar. For the children of Issachar according to their families and their territories went to Jezreel. And included Chesloth, Sunim, Hafraim, Shion, Anaharoth, Ribith, Kishion, Abez, Remeth, En Ganim, En Hada, Beth Pazez, and the border reached to Tabor, Shahazima, and Beth Shemesh. Their border ended at the Jordan, sixteen cities with their villages. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Issachar, according to their families and cities and, and their villages. The fifth lot, the fifth lot came out. For the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families and their territory, included Helkoth, Hali, Batin, Akshaf, Al Alamelech, Alamelech, should know that one, Ahmad, Mishal. It reached to Mount Carmel westward along the brook Sihor, Libnoth. It turned toward the sunrise. To Beth Dagon, and it reached to Zebulon and to the valley of Jephthah El, then northward towards Ben Emek and Niel, bypassing Kabul, which is on the left, including Ebron, Rehob, Haman, Kinah, and as far as Greater Sidon. And the border turned to Ramah and to the fortified cities of Tyre. Then the border turned to 
Hosha and ended at the, air, at the sea by the region of Akzib. Also, Uma, Ephek, and Rehob were included, 22 cities and their villages. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families, these cities and their villages. The sixth lot came out to the children of Naphtali, for the children of Naphtali, according to their families, and their border began at Heleph, enclosing the territory from the terebinth tree in Zaananim, Adami, Nekeb, and Jebniel, as far as Lakkum, it ended in, at the Jordan. For the Heleph, the border extended westward to as Noth Tabor and went out from there towards Hakak. It abandoned Zebulon, excuse me, it adjoined Zebulon on the south side and Asher on the west side and ended at Judah by the Jordan toward the sunrise. And the fortified cities are Zedim, Zir, Hamath, Rakath, Chinnereth, Adama, Ramah, Hazor, Kadesh, Edre, in Hazor, Iran, Iron, Migdal El, Horim, Beth Anath, Beth Shemesh, nineteen cities and their villages. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, according to their families and the cities and their villages. The seventh lot came out for the tribe of the children of Dan according to their families, and the territory of their inheritance was Zorah, Eshtoal, Ir Shemesh, Sha'alab bin, Ajalon, Jethla, Elon, Timna, Ekron, Ekteka, Gibbethon, Baalath, Jehud, Bani Barak, Gath Rimon, Mijarkan, Rakan, with the region near Joppa. And the border of the children of Dan went beyond these because of the children of Dan went up to fight against Lashem and took it and they struck it with the edge of the sword, took possession of it and dwelt in it and they called Lesham Don after the name of Don their father. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families, and these cities with their villages. When they had made an end of dividing the land as an inheritance according to their borders, the children of Israel gave an inheritance among them to Joshua, the son of Nun, or Nun. According to the word of the Lord, they gave him the city which he asked for, Timnah Sarah, in the mountains of Ephraim. He built the city and dwelt in it, these were the inheritance which Eleazar the priest, Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribe of the children of Israel divided as an inheritance by lot in Shiloh before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. So they made an end of dividing the country. And you can see when you look back at Genesis 49 how some of that was, we, we looked at uh, Simeon, but some of that was, prescribed by that, by that uh, um, prophecy, uh, the blessing and the cursing that Israel laid on them with, uh, um, in, in where they would lay, they would border with so-and-so, they'd be a haven for ships and, and various uh, things that, that he had called out. Um, but the thing that stuck out to me, I guess, as I looked at the maps and I looked at these things, um, I think we have this mentality, t tend to have this mentality of um, almost, almost a false gospel that's, that's, going, that's very alive in our culture of equality, and though that's, that's the most important thing is equality, equality, equality. And when you look at this land as God divided with these people, there's no such thing there. He gave some people a tiny little bit. He gave some people a huge amount. He gave some people great land by the sea, by the river. Some people land by the sea and the river. You have Manasseh who's got land by the sea, by the river, all the way in between at the, at the Mediterranean Sea. They've got the whole stretch. And so there's just no, there's no even concept 
of equality. And I had, honestly, when somebody taught, taught a couple of weeks ago, and I was looking at the map, and I, you know, I, I asked the question in here, is, is there any reason that we see for the apparent lack of fairness that, that went, went with this division? And I, and I think the, the reality is, is that's because I, I have this bias towards, because that's our culture, towards equality, 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 equality. And that's just not a, it's, it's a false gospel. It really is that's being pushed very much in our culture. And I think the life lesson here, God gives unequally. He does. He just does. You can look at every individual, and we're very different. Some are more intelligent. Some are less intelligent. Some are, some are taller. Some are shorter. Some are whatever. We're all different. We're, some had great parents. Some didn't have good parents. Some had you know, great wealth as kids. Some didn't. Some had great opportunities. Every, I've, uh, I was talking to Sean uh, one time, with, um, Sean Wilson, and he's got a buddy that he just falls into stuff. His, every time he turns around, he gets hit by a truckload of money. And it's, I mean, it's, it's literally just these opportunities that happen to him that are great opportunities. And, and so, so, but if we focus so much in life on, I look around and things aren't equal, and therefore I'm upset, mad, whatever, and rather than being content, and God, call, God gives unequally and yet calls us all to be content in Him. And what I'm not saying, I'm not saying that we shouldn't, as followers of Christ, try to help and level and, and those things, but... but um, we need to be careful supporting authoritarian measures that are being pushed in our, in our culture of, of this forcing equal outcomes. And that's just, that's nothing but a Marxist authoritarian push. And we need to be careful. And I've heard a, a number of Christians who actually support these ideas of, of equal outcomes. And we, that's not a biblical concept whatsoever. Um, God gives unequal stations in life. He gives unequal ability. He gives unequal family situation. He gives unequal opportunities. Equality is not a concern to God. Contentment is. Life lesson. Use gifts, talents, life lessons, opportunities you have been given in life to glorify Jesus. I think we have a tendency to understand that people, those who are revered at least later on as heroes are those who overcame adversity. They, not those necessarily who were born with a silver spoon in their mouth and everything went easy, but those who overcame difficult things, those who worked hard to achieve something good, those who took a bad situation and turned it around for the Lord. And you can... You can you know, there's, there's many examples throughout history of that, but those are who we tend to, you know, whether, whether the story became mythology or not with, you know, the uh, Abraham and the, is it Abraham or Washington with the cherry tree? Abraham with the cherry tree. Was it Washington with the cherry tree? What was Abraham's? There's, anyway, there's two stories, one about Washington, one about Abraham. Both are complete mythology, but they're, their mythology because they make us, uh, they overcame something and, uh, you know, so, so it's, we need to, that is built into us is that the things that are heroic to us are overcoming difficult situations. And that's because God calls us to, we, we can't overcome until we first are content and willing to uh, quit complaining and start fighting. Life lesson, God concerns himself with the property of men. We need also be concerned about and respect the property of men. One thing in this chapter that you see, God has, God lays all sorts of parameters out. Here, here, from here to here to here to here to here, and this belongs to him. From here to here to here to here, and this belongs to them. From here to here, and this belongs to them. That's a real thing that God cares about. He cares about nations. He cares about tribes. He cares about property, property of men. That's why property rights were built into who we are as a people. Our nation was built on the concept of, uh, of um, the Bible and property rights was a big part of that. It used to be a huge thing. 
And we need to be aware of, of when, we're, when we are supporting the stealing of property from other people. When, when we're using the big gun of the government to point at this guy, let me have your property to give to this guy. We do that in our government. And we need to be careful as Christians not support that. The property rights matter to the Lord. He, he is concerned about not because everything doesn't belong to him anyway, but here he has divided things up for certain people. And I'm going to, at verse 49 and 50, when they had made an end of dividing the land as an inheritance according to their borders, the children of Israel gave an inheritance among them to, the, to Joshua the son of Nun. According to the word of the Lord, they gave him the city which he asked for, Timnath Sarah, in the mountains of Ephraim, and he built the city and dwelt in it. My understanding from what I was able to gather of that land he asked for was very poor land. It was kind of barren, not very good land. And so we don't have any way to know the hearts of the situation. So, so just kind of to explore it a little, could it have been, was this really a great man who after having done all this, he asked for little? Yes, let me just have this little corner over here. It could be. It may very, very well may be. I, could, it, could it be that false humility, oh, I'll just take this, expecting them to say, no, you have this great. It could be. I, I, I don't know. I think the interesting part is that, that, that in, this, in this thing, it said, according to the word of the Lord, they gave him. So we don't know what was the Lord doing in his heart right then. Had, had he expected them to honor him in that moment and say, no, you must have the greatest of this land. And he said, well, maybe for your good right now, you don't need that. We don't know. It could have been, could have been this, this is the humility of this man to ask for the little part. It was honest humility, and he was using that uh, as a lesson to the others. That it's not, he's not remembered for the greatness of his land now. He's for, remembered for having been a great leader in battle. Right, so I don't know. I'm not claiming I know. Just an interesting, interesting bit there. That's really from Joshua 19, about as <laughs> much as I, I found in there to to dig into. Do you guys have any questions?